a look at the teams that have qualified for the 2022 World Cup. There are still three spots left. A number of teams still in with a chance to take those spots. Wales, Ukraine, Scotland, Costa Rica, New Zealand, Australia, Peru and the UAE. And also what we do know is that the pots are set too. But the big story coming from FIFA Congress was the Norwegian FA president, Lisa Klavner, saying uh, during the Congress that she, well, basically she delivered a very strong message over human rights issues in Qatar. She said in 2010, World Cups were awarded by FIFA in unacceptable ways with unacceptable consequences. Human rights, equality and democracy, the core interests of football, were not in the starting 11. These basic rights were pressured onto the field as substitutes, mainly by outside voices. FIFA has addressed these issues, but there is still a long way to go. Migrant workers injured or families of those who died in the build-up to the World Cup must be cared for. FIFA, all of us, must take all necessary measures to really implement change. We now welcome in Frank Leboff, Jan Agafiotto and Gabriele Marcotti as well. Gab is in Qatar right now. What was the reaction to this, Gab? Well, uh, you had the immediate reaction. This always happens in, in FIFA land. Whenever somebody speaks and, and criticizes somebody at the Congress, we've seen it happen before, you always get somebody who jumps out and says, no, no, let's stick to football. Let's not lose our focus. Yeah, all this stuff is important, but let's, let's stick to football. In this case, it was the gentleman from the Honduras FA, but the FIFA president, Johnny Infantino, did address this later. Um, and look, he pointed out, None of these people were in charge when um, Qatar was awarded the World Cup in, in 2010, right? Um, 25 people voted on them, and uh, 14 of those 25 since then have either been suspended or banned or indicted for, for corruption or investigated. Um, so he made the point, it's a different FIFA. They inherited this World Cup. So as far as the corruption question, that was then, now they have to, to try to make something positive out of it. And as for the migrant workers, FIFA cited the fact that they've been working with, with trade unions um, and that things actually have improved. They abolished the kafala system, which um, I think in some, some people compared it to slavery. I don't think that's a, that's a bad comparison. Um, they, the, the number of worker deaths, worker safety standards, uh, FIFA say are now in line. Uh, FIFA, and more importantly, the trade unions who go and inspect this stuff are now in line with, with Western standards. I think the big question in a lot of people's minds though is, okay, that may be true now, but what happens once the circus rolls out of town? What guarantees do we have um, that this is going to be lasting change? Or is it that once the spotlight moves away from Qatar, it's going to be business as usual and they'll go back to the way it was before in Qatar and the way it still is today, uh, really across the Gulf, from Saudi Arabia to Dubai to Abu Dhabi to Bahrain? Uh, Jan, you actually know Lisa Klavenis. What have been your thoughts on what she said today? Well, first of all, I'm very proud of her because I, I know you need a lot of courage to stand up amongst men because the, most of these people are men sitting there doing nothing for football, just sitting there enjoying their free lunch. So I'm proud of her. She's a former footballer. She's been a, a very good representative of us footballers throughout the years. She's a, she's a learned lawyer and we've had a big debate in Norway, as, as you know, and she had... A, she had a mandate for, uh, from our assembly here in Norway to go and, and do this. And I think she did it with, with dignity. And, but let's be honest, this is not like she's like a revolutionary. What she says is just common sense. The problem is there is no one else saying that. They don't dare to say that. And, and Gab got a good summary of, of it all. But Lisa Klavnes is just doing the obvious thing. I mean, we, can, we love football, but there's not a lot of people love FIFA. And that, that is just fact, because we don't believe them. And Gab said, what will, do, what will happen when the circus leaves town? We know what's happening. We just have a look at the history. I mean, this is always the best World Cup this and the best World Cup that. And yes, Infantino can say that they're not around anymore. The, the guys who put this to Qatar, I, th I think Qatar will do the, try to do their best. But this, this nation never had the World Cup in the first place because that process, choosing them and Russia at that time, 
from the people who voted for that. They are more or less all in prison or very close to being in prison or taken out of some Swiss hotels, thrown out of FIFA. Can you imagine how, how stupid you must be to be thrown out of FIFA? Uh, as, uh, Gerb, just to go back to what Jan was saying there, that this story, it's something that isn't new. We've heard it before. We have seen journalists reporting on it. Obviously, this was an FA head. How much do you think the story will overshadow the World Cup as we get closer and closer to it? I mean, look, uh, it's, it's difficult to tell. People are talking about this. Uh, Jan's absolutely right. Uh, I think perhaps more questions should have been asked in 2010 and immediately afterwards, you know, when there was still time to go and correct this. Because uh, we know we had the Garcia inquiry, unfortunately it came out way late, I think in 2017, that basically found that, and I go back to this, uh, between 2018 and 2022, every single bid, every single bid, including, by the way, the England bid, the US bid, every single bid, had major irregularities, uh, with the exception of the uh, of, of the Dutch, uh, the Holland Belgium bid, um, and I think possibly the Japan bid, and that's it. So we know every, every a lot of bad stuff went on. So then the question is, you know, is it right that people go and use World Cups for political reasons? They always have to some degree, and FIFA took the line once they took over we can't take the World Cup away. And Russia was one year away, obviously Qatar um, five years away. The wheels were in motion. So they did, they, they say that they really set forth and they said, uh, and the Qataris as well, how do we improve the situation, especially with the migrant workers? Uh, and they turned to trade unions and they got these people in and they got rid of some laws. They've, they've certainly improved worker conditions. The big question though, is what happens when the spotlight's gone. And I think the, uh, the, the head of the Norwegian uh, FA made a great point. You know, she said it was external pressures that caused this change. It was a shining the spotlight on the fact that Qatar had the World Cup, that people asked, well, wait a minute, these beautiful build buildings you see behind me, who's building them? Under what conditions? How much are they paid? Can they be paid a fair wage, given that Qatar has one of the highest per capita incomes in the world? And that brought about positive change um, in Qatar, uh, at least for now. Will it continue afterwards? That's the big question, but ultimately, that's a political question, and I think that goes beyond FIFA and, and beyond football, really. Yeah. But, 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 but Kay, okay, if I may say, I mean, we, we saw when we were getting the pots there, if I may say, though, that if you saw the bullying kind of thing, what they do in their gentlemanish way, talking about the football family if we talk about the football family how many times have we heard corrupt people talking about the football family i love my football family the football family is something happening in the dress room is kids playing around football family is not people men in gray suit sitting somewhere doing nothing that is not the football family. So if I have a dollar every time I heard some, some of them said, I, I, I would be a very, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I would be good in dollars. Thank you very much for watching ESPN FC on YouTube. For more highlights, analysis, and exclusive content, be sure to subscribe.